boss wake up so in this video we're going to be learning how to make this particular concrete detail um, in a in the other video I made there will be a link to that in the description below we take this further and turn it into this we basically put the reinforced concrete and color code each size um, in the corbel and the column um, but in this video I'm going to be showing you so I've already made that video so check that one out um, you don't really need to know how to make this to be able to RC detail but some people will want to know how to make this particular thing so that they can work on the RC for this particular structure so what we're going to learn is how to make this the things that we're going to make that are best spoke are going to be this corbel here and this um, um, what do you call that uh, concrete I-beam so I'm just joining yeah they're already joined so without further ado let's let's begin um, so you'll make your own custom beam and you'll make your own custom corbel so I'm gonna say file new project let me just open up my timer here structural template say OK so we have two levels I'm going to delete these analytical levels um, at level two I'm just going to put down a floor structure floor. by the way I should say the let me just quickly explain what these are these are transfer beams and so beams rest on these and so if you come to the 3d view it's good to know some context I'm just gonna, uh, these are fat columns and the transfer beams rest on these corbels um, which are pre stressed uh, as well as they have some rebar and some uh, pre-stress post-stressed tendons in them or pre-stress I don't know and basically we need a column free, free area in this room here and so these will take the columns from above these beams these transfer beams will take the load of the columns from above and basically absorb the forces so to speak and transfer the, the forces onto these so basically their, their main function is not to break and if they don't break they're going to just transfer the load onto these which will go down into the basement and then into the ground so I'm just going to show you how to do how to make that um, let's go to 3d mode and let's create a template I'll say I'll duplicate this one just call it 3d you should get into the habit of making a template for each view I'm going to turn everything on, turn off the analytical model, no annotation and analytical. We don't really need annotation, but you don't need to worry about that. And just turn everything on. We can turn things off as we need. So everything is on for now. Everything structural. Yeah. Cool. Now I'm going to hit control C, select this and well, I'm going to hit copy. I missed see on my keyboard actually <laughs> um, and say paste the line to selected levels and say level one so level two I will place down some columns concrete ones we'll put uh, one of these fat ones down there and there and there and there I'm gonna show two examples so close all these down and say 3d those are below this is level one this is level two so we're going to imagine this is the ground floor this is the first floor and so we're going to put the transfer beams across there so now we need to place 
some more beams to represent the beams on top. I'm going to change this to height and say unconnected, yeah. And I'm going to change the sizes. This will place them on. size so one two three four I want these to be set at level two which they are and I'll type CO for copy and boom there we go so oops Type BX to box these so we can see this more clearly. Now, I'll come to level two and I'll place a beam down, a concrete beam, from there to there. And so we can see a transfer beam would be a lot fatter than that. We can see that beam there. But we want, as I showed you before, we don't want this. We want an I-beam. So Revit doesn't come with that preloaded in. We have to make that ourselves. So how do we do that? <coughs> um, well, we create our own structural framing elements, so file, new, family come down to structural metric structural framing say open and as you can see it's already got something in there that doesn't contain the material I'm actually going to load in before we continue a I'll just double check this it's going to be concrete, so we'll get, tell it the model behavior should be concrete. You know what? I'll do that at the end because I'll show you what happens when you don't do that. Um, I'm going to load in a another concrete beam, yeah? So load family. UK. Structural framing. The reason for this is because I just want the material for it. I don't want to create a new material. There you go. So now it's in there. Uh, as you can see, it will be under there. So all I want to do is just place it in there. Um, I'll create a new structural material. Well, I don't need to. It's already in there. I'll create. I'll change the structural material to where is concrete precast concrete that was the material that was the, that's what this was so that's why I loaded it in boom apply now if we go to consistent colors you can see it's concrete uh, there it, there it is there I'm not going to delete that um, Actually, I'm not going to delete it yet. We'll delete it at the end, just in case, because we're about to delete this. I don't know if it will keep the material or not. So, I'll delete this. And if we come to floor plans, you can see that there's a line there, which will be visible in non-realistic mode, and sorry, not non-realistic mode, in, in less, in coarse um, view modes. So we need to keep that. I'm going to keep thin lines off. But we want to put the structure down, which will be viewable in fine and 3D modes. So how do we do that? I mean, firstly, we can double check that this isn't view viewable in 3D mode. Uh, yeah, it's only going to be viewable in coarse mode. Well, you can view it in 3D, but only in coarse 3D mode. Um, Right, so I am going 
to type ref reference line uh, you won't have that keyboard shortcut likely so you go to create and select reference line there and I'm going to say al type al for align align it to the same thing that the re uh, previous beam was at which is this particular reference line a reference plane and lock it and this one to this one and lock it and then this one to this one and lock cool now I actually am going to do it slightly differently I could make an extrusion but I don't want to I want to do it differently I want to cr create a new profile so new family and come to metric generic profile or metric profile say OK so this is going to be the center of our I-beam and that's going to be the also the center in the other direction other axes so I'll select this type CS for create similar and before well firstly I'm going to just put 100 so I have that side and that outside side the top and the bottom now I need a reference line for this point that point that point and that point but first I want to dimension these we'll call this H because it's the height we'll call this W well I think it's called TW officially now oh, I also want to dimension these and say keep them equal to keep the center point at where it is it's more about the center point rather than the structure itself the profile itself and then I want two more reference planes in here and two more in here representing this point and this point yeah and then same at the top so you might be getting confused but don't worry all will be apparent in a second it's good to set up your reference planes first and also we need the thickness to be the thickness the central central thickness so the width here type CS for create similar thick lines 25 bomb bomb okay so type DI for dimension label this one I'm gonna change the scale I'll change it again to one to two and label this and also remember to make this one equal um, we'll call this one WW standing for web width I think that's the web um, this one will be called TF for or TF1 for top flange one so that will be the distance from here to here yeah then we'll call this one tf2 say so, okay and that will be the distance from here to here the x-axis or y-axis y-axis distance it's just the vertical distance even um, and this one bottom flange same same concept BF1 and this one will be BF2 so one represents the out, outermost distance and two represents the more inner distance so we don't need to worry about this height here that will be sorted by this automatically we can't actually put one there because it would over constrain the, the, the profile now all we have to do is draw a profile in so I'll type li for line pick lines that one that one that one that one that one that one 
Type T off a trim. There to there. There to there. There to there. There to there. And SL for split. There and there. TY or this button here, you will have to do. Um, I've got my own shortcut for that. TM. I'm going to use that one so you can do multiple. Actually, it should be this one. And then, um, same again. Use that one. And so, AO for align that one to that one and lock. That to that and lock. I'm going to select multiple alignment. And I think that's it. Gonna align these also. Uh, type LI for line. There to there. There to there. There to there. There to there. Cool. So now it's good to test. Those work. <coughs> <clears throat> those work these work these work and for this particular case the top and bottom will be equal you can incorporate that into your parameters but I'm not going to just in case we want to use this one day and say have an unequal thing uh, there you go Okay, so it all looks good. You can even test by inputting numbers in here. Just remember that way, just remember to, you know what, we'll put some default numbers in here. Nah, we're good, we're good. We'll just make the, the BFs and thingies equal 30, the BFs and TFs equal 30 each. And I want to order these, so H and W, W will go to the top, they're the outermost, just for neatness, making it easier for the next guy to work with. Um, and actually, whoops, I want to align this line as well, just in case. It looks like it's already done, but cool. Same here. So, I will now load into project, and it will go into family one, that's the one. Um, and so we have our profile in here. Um, so, now I need to incorporate those, create those parameters in here, same one, so TF1 length uh, tf2 is the length bf1 bf2 h ww tf or tw tw meant top flange so we could put a BW to mean bottom flange, but I'm not going to. So I like to keep, so this one will go right to the bottom, because it's not one we're going to really play with. The length is a general dimension for beams and things. And just apply, oh, so we need to give them default values. So we'll say, 500 uh, this one WW what was that web width so 50 H would be 500 BF we'll say 30 30 30 30 apply okay so 
Now, I want to create a sweep. I'll pick the path and I'll pick that reference line. Say OK. Select the profile. That's the name of our profile that we just made. And say OK. I'll turn off thick lines. And now I want to give this the structural material. Now it's concrete. And the profile itself needs the parameters to work with it. So we'll pick H and we'll tell it we want it to equal H from this family. WW needs to equal the same as what I tell it WW will be. Yeah, there you go. TW will be TW. BF will be BF, BF1 will be BF1. BF2 will be BF2. TF1 will be TF1. TF2 will be TF2. And so, okay, there you go. Now, subcategory, we will say, we don't need to worry about that. As I said, the actual behavior of this model is set to other, so we'll have a problem in a second which we'll talk about. But we are basically finished. Um, and if we go to reference level, you can test this out to show that your reference line is working as it should. These things, and I'll just control Z. Uh, save it if you want. I will load it into my project, family two. Oops, cancel. I loaded it into the wrong project. So it goes into the project project one. There you go. You can't load it into a profile. Um, okay, so it's loaded in. I could have placed it there, but I'm not going to. The reason is I want to just change this one. So I'll copy this one over there. And that's our previous one. Now we want our new one. And we'll offset the top minus 350. And there you go. Oh, minus 300. Great. So, I mean, yeah, it's a different type of concrete. That's why it's a different color. Um, because this wouldn't be cast in place. And so the great thing about this is oh there's there's our problem we can't see it like we can see this one and that is because of its behavior it's not a concrete element yet so if i come to the family itself and say well first i'd like to define its section shape it's an i shape sloped flange and it's concrete so you can save it if you like. Overwrite existing version, yes. Now, when we go to level two, we can see it's acting like concrete. But in this particular case, they wanted it to be offset maybe 20 millimeters. So I'll select that, type off OF offset 25 millimeters, not 20 and just drag it back uh, same here well I'll show you a shortcut you can say 25 and drag it back there so now when you isolate these see it's slightly offset as it should be and then we'll do the corbel will be placed underneath so let me show you how to make the corbel mm, obviously well no concrete beam would have these values uh, so if you wanted to make a new one you can duplicate this one give it a name like a name representing the size and we would say that uh, WWE is more than that, so maybe 250. Uh, 
BW would be H would be like 750 BF would be 100 100 and there you go that's a more realistic looking corbel in fact um, web width would probably be I don't know 200 probably be less than that and there you go but you can you can toy with that pick whatever you want do whatever you want with it um, great now the corbel this element here as you can see it requires one width from this face to that face um, a little fillet and a length from there to there and a length from there to there so you can we're gonna make a face based family you can either use this as the face or the column facing face as the face totally up to you but those are the best options don't use any of the others because that's just stupid um, right so I'll close down the profile no I'm not gonna save uh, I'll close that one down as well and save that one and I'll say file new family face based metric generic face based model and so as I was saying if you didn't understand me I'm going to, in this particular case I use this face as the face that is going to rest on this particular surface but for this case I'm actually going to use the top face because if I move the beam or change its height it will always associate to that and so it would be better for that particular case um, actually I don't know e either way is fine either way is doable but I'm trying to think about what's the fastest way to explain and yes yeah, so okay what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna model it basically upside down so how do we do that well you come to floor plans and you first do whoops oops <laughs> oops ah it's, it's up here you first do the width so we want reference planes to represent this and this uh, select this type cs for create similar 100 and then we also want one for this face so from there to there so we're going to let this reference plane represent this edge and so select this type cs offset 100 boom doesn't really matter what number you use so type di for dimension set up our reference planes here 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 equalize those di for dimension again We'll call that one W for width, and we'll call this one L for length. Um, yeah, that's it for the plan view. Now, I'll drag this one there we want reference planes for this for the fillet no 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 no. we won't do that yet we won't do that yet we'll represent a reference plane for this that point and that point so we only need two more so I'll go to front view and remember we're working upside down so we have the this refer reference plane or reference level will represent the top you know what so 
select this type CS for create similar there to there and then type OF for offset 250 okay no <laughs> just copy this one up and there you go so DI for dimension from here not from the face from what either a reference level or the reference plane the same there we'll name this one h1 for the top height and then this one h2 for the second height that's about it really that's all you need to know for now um, so now we'll go to left view and we've already represented the width um, so now let's create an extrusion select lines that one that one that one type tr for trim there to there there to there draw a line from well firstly i want to align these so align the reference plane to the line boom boom and that to that boom and then draw a line from there to there trim these type tr for trim there you go so now they will work together so front I'll drag it there and lock drag it there and lock so now when we drag this it will do that kind of stuff take the front take the left there there so I'm actually going to insert load family rectangular again just so that I can give this a material I'll give it a new parameter structural material it will be a type parameter not an instance parameter and I will give it cast in place concrete apply okay apply okay there you go so if we set it to consistent colors you can see it's now concrete and oh I forgot to do to delete the framing from the other one it doesn't really matter to be honest but remember to do that now let's do the fillet I left that out to make you understand what we were doing so if I select this type CS for create similar and I fill it well we'll put 50 for now 50 mil that way 50 mil that way type DI for dimension that one and that one we'll name these two the same thing fill it say OK and now we'll double click this extrusion uh, use this to cut this back and that don't think we need to align anything in this particular case yeah it's fine there you go there's your fillet now there's your corbel finished um, anything here nope now let's close everything down and load into the project project one no I'm not going to save it and so as I was saying we're going to place this is the face we place it on you can see it's associated now I'll press space to rotate it now type AL for align there to there and we'll come to top mode AL for align well this one probably better off doing and well type MV that center point to that center point there you go now DM for mirror
and there you go. Now you, you want to edit the numbers, the values, fill it will be something like 20, well, 50, and then H1 will be 500, H2 will be 250, L will be 500, W will be 500. Now that doesn't look like a corbel, but it's okay. Um, H2, that's what it is, uh, so 750. That doesn't look like one either, that's another extreme, but you can play around with the numbers of course. This is only to show you how it's modeled. And you know what? This one, just to make it look cool, I'm actually going to give it the in situ. It won't, I don't think it will be in situ, no, it won't be in situ, it will be precast. You know what? I think we can just toy with the uh, yeah. with the graphics. Anyway, that's uh, not really required. You've learned how to do it, so I hope you learned something. I hope you liked my video. Uh, Please like, share and subscribe and come back next time for some more great videos.